The design determines the type of closure you're going to have to put on your garment, whether it is a button, hook, eye, or snap. There are various shapes, sizes to your buttons, but basically you either have a sew-through button or a button with a shank. The shank may be a shallow but part of the button, may be inserted into the button, may extend from the button, but the shank is there and gives your button height from the garment. The sew-through button may come either with four holes or two holes, and you are going to have to create a shank out of thread. Hooks and eyes. The hook is a wire hook and eye, which is a wire eye. There are straight eyes and loop eyes. And we have the trouser hook and eye, generally used for pants or skirts. The wire hooks and eyes are used in dresses and may be used with skirts. And finally, we have the snaps. Snaps come in assorted sizes, usually used to, con to close a garment and leave it very flat. Very rarely are snaps used to hold the garment closed because snaps are not as strong as hooks and eyes or buttons. The silk covered snap, a snap covered, a heavy duty snap covered with silk or uh, a lightweight fabric are used on coats and suits. This type of snap, the really large snap, will hold a garment closed securely. We'll start with putting wire hooks and eyes to the back of a skirt or to the side of a skirt. A skirt does not always have to be closed with a hook and eye. A skirt may be closed with a button and buttonhole. The first placement is your wire hooks. And you place it so the loop or hook part of the apparatus is about a quarter of an inch back from the edge of the garment. And the loop, once more, the side loop is a quarter of an inch down from the side of the garment or the edge of the waistband. A pin will hold your hook in place while you stitch. When you stitch, you should be careful, first of all, to make sure that you have a very tiny knot at the end of your thread. And when you stitch, again, make sure that when you stitch this down, you are not going to stitch through to the right side of the garment. We'll stitch taking about three to four stitches per loop. That generally secures the loop in place. Slide your needle through to the opposite loop and three to four stitches. Always taking care that you're not going through to the right side. When you've completed your loops or back loops, slide your needle through to the hook area. Of course, you have to remove your pin. The reason you want to st stitch down the hook area of this apparatus is that it will hold the garment in place. Otherwise, the garment will pull away when this hook is closed. So we loop our threads through the hook area once more, three stitches are necessary. When you finish stitching one hook, if you need another one, 
you slide your needle through to the lower point on the waistband so you can position your second hook once more approximately a quarter of an inch in from the outside edge and the bottom loop about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. Again, we'll stick a pin in to hold the hook in place. And we'll stitch. Always be very careful that your stitch does not come through to the right side of the garment. Always check. Fingers are a good check if you keep your finger underneath your stitch, but sometimes even that isn't always true. When you completed anchoring your hook, you t slide your needle through the garment to the edge so you can tack without leaving any residue. We're now ready to mark off the placement for our eyes. The eyes should fall along the center of the garment, but there are times that you may have placed it slightly off. So first you take and stroke the edge of your hook with chalk, pencil, or crayon. Hold the waistband closed and squeeze. There you are. You have marked your garment with chalk. So you can take and mark it off with pencil and we're ready to stitch our eyes in place. At this point, you may bring your thread through from the wrong side. Your hook always goes to the top or face of the waistband your garment is always hooked over rather than the eye on top. Slip your needle through to the bottom loop. We try to always use the straight wire eyes. They're more secure and you get a better placement. Finishing my first eye, I move to the position of my second eye. Wire uh, hooks and eyes are also used to close the back neckline of a dress. The hook is placed in position and a wire eye is used to close the garment. If you wish, you may place a thread eye instead of a wire eye. When your eye is stitched and finished, you hook it and your garment is closed very securely. You can see how the stitching holds the hooks 
in place. For a trouser hook and eye placement, it tends to be a little simpler. First of all, your trouser hook is a great deal larger. And you have definite areas where you must stitch your trouser hook. Once more, we start with a small knot. And we place our hook again so that the hook area is approximately 3 eighths of an inch in from the raw edge. You've got a much larger hook here. You also place the hook so it is in the center of the waistband. Unless the waistband is a very wide waistband, you only need one hook. You slide your needle through, making sure you do not come through to the right side of the garment. And we stitch it securely. The only thing that seems to run, give you some problems in a trouser hook is that since it is a hard metal, you may find that you may need a heavier duty thread since the metal tends to cut the thread while wearing. It wears out your threads. When you completely have stitched your little loops, Slide your thread through, making sure you did not come through to the right side as the garment as I did. Slide it through, that takes a little bit of doing, to the edge of the waistband and tack it, turn, clip it off. Now, placement for the eye is simple. It should be on the center back or when the zipper is closed, exactly where that waistband is to go. Again, you can, at this point, use a pin to give yourself the placement of your eye. And you take an eye. Place it over the pin, center it, and stitch your eye in place. This type of closure is used a great deal for skirts and trousers. And that's what it is. It is called a trouser hook. Stitch it securely and bring your thread to the inside of the garment and tack. And now we have our hook and eye placement in the waistband of our skirts, hooks and eyes. When you're ready to put buttons to your garment, you should make sure your placement is correct. You pin your garment closed and using an awl, poke that through at your button hole placement. When you've poked it through, you should have a mark on the right side of your garment that shows where your button should be stitched. Now, once more, you 
make a very small knot at the end of your thread. Thread used for a dress or shirt may be the same thread you use to sew your garment. You double your thread and maybe a little beeswax on the thread will help strengthen it. But for shirts and dresses, the regular thread is sufficient. You start from the right side with a tiny knot and then bring the thread through from the wrong side. If you're sewing a button to a suit or a coat, you do need a heavier duty thread. I will stitch a two hole button. A two hole button just requires the stitch going from one side to another. If you are going to sew a four hole button, you're going, you may have the option of going parallel or crisscross. A sew through button does not have a shank. So you must create a shank. One way to create a shank is to stitch the button loosely and control that looseness. Another way is to insert a pin under the thread or a very fine knitting needle or even an awl. But that will help you keep the button slack. Stitch back and forth through the button three to four times. When you have completed that, bring your thread through to the back of the th button. Remove the pin and you will see you have the necessary slack to create a shank. And you create a shank by wrapping the thread around the button. And that lifts the button off the garment. That helps the button to slide through the buttonhole and not be too flat. We'll tack this off once on the right side, bring it through to the wrong side, and tack again. And then you trim it off. So you should have very little button. The placement of your button, whether you are going to place it horizontally or vertically in your stitching is up to you. But once you stitch one button in in one direction, you should stitch all your others in the same direction. I will stitch a shank button. Once more, we start on the right side, go back to the wrong side and come back to the right side and we have a little shank on our button. And that will be sufficient to hold the button shape away from the garment. Making sure again that you keep your stitches going in the same direction on all your buttons. When you've stitched through two or three times, you may take another little wrap around it to hold the button stitches neatly in place. Tack, but this time you don't have to wrap it as much as you do with the sew through button. Tack it, bring it to the wrong side, and tack it again. Always make sure that you do not make a messy stitching. Just keep your stitches all to one spot. And then here too, you will find that the button will be perfectly flat and secure against the garment. And that's how you sew a button, a sew through button and a shank button. Probably the finishing touch on a garment is putting a snap in a 
spot that you really want to secure and yet let it remain invisible. And we'll say we want to keep this spot on our garment down flat. So we have our snap. There are two sides to every snap. The top side, which has a little bit of an extension, is called the stud. And that is stitched to the top of the garment. It's a much finer half of your two-part snap. Care should be taken when you take your little bit of a stitch first, once more, with our knot to the inside and trim away any excess thread, that when you stitch this part of the snap, that none of the stitches go to the right side. And we move around the snap, taking two stitches to each hole. Slide through to the next one and continue always checking back to see that you have not come through to the right side. Snaps should blend with the fabric. That is, there are silver snaps and there are black snaps. Very rarely are there any other color snaps unless specifically ordered by the manufacturer. So naturally, on this type of garment that I'm stitching, I would normally put in a silver snap. When you finish stitching, pull the thread needle through to the wrong side so that you are not going to have any visible tack. And then tack it underneath, perhaps in an interfacing, perhaps in a facing. It all depends where you would find where your tack is attached to, and that's where you would tack it. Now, the placement of the other half. As you see, this will snap in. So it's very, very easy to find the center of your, actually a needle is better, the center of your snap. The needle will go right through. Bring the garment into position the way it would naturally close and bring your needle through. That little spot tells me it's exactly where the center of my snap should be and I can mark it with my awl, remove the needle and place the snap with the hollow part up and the heavier part down. This time I may, if I want to, sew through to the wrong side. I may have to avoid the sew through by the nature of where the snap is placed. And again, stitch, come around to the next half, stitch, and keep moving around your snap. Snaps should never be used to close a waistband. They would not, it would not hold. Snaps may be used as a substitute for buttons, but very rarely. You would have to use a much larger snap to secure a garment instead of a button. Bring your, your needle through and tack. Clip off your thread and we try our snap. And it should lay perfectly smooth without any visible pulls. Snaps.